We can now talk to Ellie Butler's granddad, Neil Gray, in his first TV interview. Uh, Neil Gray, good morning to you. Good Thank morning. you very much for coming on our program. How do you react to the sentence that was handed out to Butler yesterday? I'm happy that they gave him a severe sentence, but in my opinion, the sentence should be more severe. He should have had at least 40 years and no remission, mm. and the same as the partner, Jenny Gray, should have had at least 20 years, because mm. I think they're both culprits. They caused the death of Ellie, mm. and they covered it up. It's interesting you say, and so should the partner, Jenny Gray, that's your daughter? Was my daughter. I've disowned her. Through, because you, you, you don't think one of your own offspring could be possibly involved in a terrible, tragic crime. Unfortunately, she was. Mm. And do, you, do you accept that she was under his control, that he was domineering, violent, abusive and, and controlled her? I think, it, yeah, I, th I understand that he was violent and controlling, but I think she's also capable of being the same mm. with him. So I would say it's 50-50. Right. You and your wife, Linda, cared for and nurtured Ellie for five of her six years. Yes. Tell us a little bit about Ellie. What was she like? Beautiful. Excuse me. Bubbly, good, gorgeous little girl, nobody's fault, very brainy, intelligent, and very loving. Mm. She was very clever, she was polite, she liked playing games, she had lots of friends at her school, and the, the stories what Butler and her saying that she was rude and lazy, a complete and utter false lies. Mm. She was a gorgeous little girl and it was a great privilege, excuse me, right. to have been a great parent. And you looked after her like, she, you and Linda looked after her like she was her your own daughter. Yeah. And the reason that you had her in your care is because of course Butler had a conviction for assaulting her, for shaking, shaking Ellie when lady, she yes. was six weeks of age, yes. which was later quashed as we know but that's why you were caring for her yes and actually yeah. you fought to get to continue having custody of her yes when he and your daughter were trying to get to get custody back when yeah. his conviction was quashed yeah we had about from 207 to 212 we were in court virtually every year for mm. periods of time trying to keep hold of Ellie Ellie didn't want to go back to her parents or birth parents, because she didn't know them, because at the times they should have got to know Ellie at the uh, family centre in Sutton, for two and a half years they never turned up to mm. see her. And Butler was very violent. And you knew that, did you? You knew what he was like? Yeah. He was very threatening to my wife and myself mm. and other members of my family. And Jenny used to be aggressive and threatening my wife and myself. And if, if we were going to court or something was supposed to be said, she, she used to find or talk to my wife and say, if you've got anything to say to your solicitor, you run it through me and Ben mm. before you talk to your solicitor. Otherwise, you will be looking over your shoulder for the rest of your lives. Right, so yes. they were threatening you and trying yeah. to control you. Yes. Um, when the judge handed custody back to Butler and your daughter, Jenny Gray, you said you could have blood on your hands. Yes. Why did you say that? Because I, I just had a premonition that Ellie wouldn't be safe. And I think Justice Hogg made, am I left? Yeah, yeah, that's the name, Justice Mrs Hogg, Justice Hogg. Mrs Justice Hogg made a big mistake. I don't think she followed proper procedure of the law. She didn't give the proper directions for the social workers who were independent uh, business people. You know, they were independent, worked for themselves, social workers. Yeah, they were private social private workers social as opposed workers. to the local authority. And they hadn't read any of the notes or they weren't allowed to look at any history mm. less than three months 
prior to them taking over. Mm. Um, we, we've attempted to get a statement from Mrs Justice Hogg. We haven't been able to yet, but at the time she said Ben Butler was the victim of a miscarriage of justice. She exonerated him. Yes. She said he had not assaulted Ellie as a six-week-old. Yes, she said that, but I don't think she took any notice of the medical evidence or the social workers or the local authority children's department because they all, they all knew that Ellie had been assaulted. Mm. She also issued um, this unpublished until yesterday order, this unpublished order that all professional, educational, medical or social care bodies holding any files relating to Ellie must make a prominent reference to the fact that Ben Butler had been exonerated. She also went further than the appeal court ruling, which had quashed, quashed his conviction. She said, look, he's exonerated, which meant it was very hard for any, for you, for the head teacher, for local authorities, social workers, to, to try and intervene if, the, if you'd wanted to. Yes, I, I, I did not know that existed until yesterday. Yeah. How did you react when you found I, out that, that there was that order? I think it's terrible. Mm -hmm. I think the laws should be radically changed and judges should be made accountable either through a proper procedure or through the Home Secretary. Mm. After all, they're human beings and they're not above the law. Mm. I wonder what you thought, Mr Gray, when you saw Ben Butler and your daughter on TV, as we saw in that clip, protesting their innocence, saying that they had been a victim of a miscarriage of justice. I thought it was a complete and utter joke because uh, after that clip was shown, he got hold of a chap called Max Clifford, a PR guru, who's now also inside. Mm. And I think their idea was to milk the system for as much money as they could possibly get. Right. Um, it's an utter farce. Mm -hmm. We know what Butler did on that day that Ellie died. Um, he inflicted awful, awful injuries onto yes. her um, in a, a fit of rage, apparently, and then summoned your daughter home from work to help him cover things up. Do you believe your daughter genuinely believed Ellie had died in an accident, which was what his story was? Do I believe that genuinely believed? Yeah. I don't think she did believe he, he died in, she died in an accident. Right. I think she knew what had happened, because mm. she knew what he was capable of, mm. because she'd inflicted injuries herself several times through the loss of other children. Why would she cover up the murder of her daughter by her partner? I don't know. Mm. That is a question I can't answer. I often soul search myself, and my wife used to uh, soul search asking why. When you have a child, your number one priority is always the child for anybody, whether it's a father, a mother, grandfather, grandmother. The child is the uttermost important thing in this world. They're precious. Mm. It's a privilege to have a child, to, in my eyes. And you've, if you have a child, you've got to look after that child completely and utterly they are the priority of your life. Mm. Without it, um, well, many nasty things would happen, mm. which have happened in the past years. Mm. I believe the social services laws regarding them have got to be brought into the 21st century. I also believe that the family courts system, as it is today, has got to be changed radically and brought into the 21st century. You mean less secrecy? Less is that what secrecy, you mean? yeah. yeah. Because they have but, opened up a little bit, haven't they? But more, open it completely, but on particular cases, keep the child's name an, or a non, not anonymity, if that's got to be, because the child has got to be kept number one. Mm. That is the most important thing. And I don't think the establishment have learnt. We've had baby Columbia, we've had baby P, we've had 10 murders in the last 10 years of children horrifically gone wrong through the um, inadequacies of the social service or the family courts. Somebody has got to stand up 
and make sure that no other child possibly doesn't get hurt like my granddaughter got hurt. And I think I will make it my um, goal for the rest of my life to fight for any child to be saved because no child deserves to go through what Ellie went mm -hmm. or any of the other children that have died in the last few years. Would you like to see a public inquiry? Yes, I would, mm -hmm. very much. Your wife, Linda, Ellie's grandma, died on the first day of the trial yes. of, of, of Butler and, and your daughter's trial. She has not been here to see justice, to see the man punished, to see your daughter punished. Um, and I understand Jenny Gray didn't know that your wife had died, is that right, until yesterday? No, that's right, that's correct. It was my wife's, in the last few days, she asked to see the priest at the hospital, at the Marsden, in Sutton, and she asked to speak to a policeman, which is, was our very kind um, police liaison officer, myself. Mm. We all wrote a letter, and Lynn stated that she did not want Jenny to know that she had cancer and she didn't know, want her to know that she died. That was her wish because she said that she does, doesn't deserve to know. Right, we're showing our audience a, a picture of Linda now. Yeah. But she was clear she didn't want her daughter no. to know. Because she could never forgive her for what she'd done to Ellie. Yeah. Um, I, I want to play, if it's all right with you. Yes, please do. Um, a little bit of the 999 call that was played in court. This is the call that uh, Jenny Gray and Butler made uh, to the emergency services when they were pretending to try and save Ellie's life. Listen to me now. My daughter is not breathing properly. She picked a car, she's not moving, and I need you to get an ambulance on the house. You need to calm down and stop shouting because I can't hear you. Great, hurry up, what's next? Right, so what, what's happened? Your daughter... Jenny, please, I can't hear you. Okay, I need you to stop shouting because I can't you hear you. Tell me what to do, please. Well, I, I don't know what's happening, my love. I I don't... Are, you do... Are you doing that now? 50, 60, 70, Keep doing that, my darling. You're doing a really good job. What do you think of that, Neil? I think it was all staged, mm. like an act play on the stage. It's all acted out. You've got to be a particular type of person to be able to act that out, haven't yeah. you? Oh, my Terrible. word. Um, on sentencing, the judge described Ben Butler as self-absorbed, ill-tempered, domineering, a man who regarded his, his child and partner as trophies, having no role other than to fit in with your infantile and sentimentalised view of family life, with you as the patriarch whose every whim was to be catered for, how would you describe Ben Butler? Evil, pure evil, um, ignorant, um, just one nasty, horrible person mm. who's now taken off the streets mm. and hopefully um, made an example of and maybe the police can catch other people who do this kind of thing. And I know you, finally, you do want to thank the police and all the people who've helped you, actually, don't you? Yeah. Um, do you hear me? That's right. <coughs> That's right. I would like to thank the homicide team who, through this two and a half to three years, have supported my wife and my family at every stage of their commitment to this murder uh, and within their links and I'm very grateful for their help and devotion of duty for what they've done and most of all they kept my family and I completely in touch at every stage where they could and I'd also like to thank the victim support people yeah. for their support for my wife and myself and family. Without either of them I don't know if I'd be here to stop. No, don't say that. We've got some really lovely messages from people who are listening to you this morning. Um, Harry tweets this. Um, this is a moving tribute to Ellie that you're giving. This tweet from Jane, this is devastating. Law says, oh my goodness, it's so sad to hear Ellie Butler's grandfather. And John says this, a public inquiry is a good idea. 
and I am really sorry for your loss, Neil. Well, I'm very grateful for everybody's support. Also, my community where I live in, um, excuse me, Wallington, the people, <coughs> sorry, right. the people in my community yeah. where I live in Wallington have been absolutely fantastic okay. in their support. As I say, again, I cannot thank the police enough and the victim support. Thank you very much for talking to us. I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you very you. much.